And you are. Balanced. <laughs> it is. Oh. The microphone is now balanced to our knees. Really? Really? Balanced? Of course. Would balanced. You? This is the most important thing in Zen. What about your schedule balance? It is very balanced, <laughs> thank you. No, it's not. What do you mean it's not balanced? Who was late today? <laughs> I, I know, I was late, but my university is balanced. My university degree. No, I mean, um, schedule. My university schedule is balanced. I mean, Mike, it's, I've had a three-month holiday. I'm still get, trying to get used to, um, you know, going to things on time. Yeah. So this is good practice. Yeah. And I failed. <laughs> yeah, good failed practice. Oh, my goodness, Mike. <laughs> anyway... This is the As Yet Undecided podcast because we're As Yet Undecided on whether Sophie's actually a reliable person or not. Because oh. I tend to I tend to follow up on my promises, but I'm always slightly late. Now, now it's, it's because that you, and, and, and you'll learn this in time, mm-hmm. that you need to schedule, uh, yeah, well, the best way I can describe it yes. is that you are, you are giving... The minimal minimalist time to yourself. Oh. In transit. So I should add more time in transit. Yes. Okay. And we are the Asia Undecided Podcast with your conflicted hosts Mike and Sophie. Conflicted about what this time? Now, because you know, you know, these friends of ours that are horrendously bad for doing precisely what you're doing. Which is. You're giving minimum time to yourself and don't allow for any sort of leniency towards something going wrong. Oh, true. So, like, for instance, you know, grabbing a, grabbing an earlier bus so you can actually show up to the thing on time. Yes. R- rather than... Grabbing the latest bus you can. Yes. So, you know... I, I I would say that there is a lot of leniency in today's like today. Yes. Um, because the trains are on strike. Oh yes, I've got to account for that. Mm. Yeah. So if it, so, can you explain further why the trains are on strike? I found something that to do with the doors, like the drivers want to have control of the doors instead of the passengers. Because um, is that something like that? Um, yeah. Um. Because okay, please explain to the audience what the current system is right now. Because I think it's rather unique. Yeah, the current system is is that when you are at a station, um, other than um, you know, other than the security that runs to and from the trains, it is the passengers' responsibility to open the doors. Yes. Not, n- not necessarily to close them. No, we don't close them, but we do open them. Whenever we arrive at a station, it is our responsibility and within the train to open up the green button to open up the doors for the other passengers. Yes. Which it, I guess the I guess the drivers can also do open the doors themselves, especially when there's no passengers. But we are given a discretion too. Yes. To open it for ourselves. Yes. Which is actually, I think this. I think Auckland is the only place that does it. I think in other countries the doors either are driver controlled or they're automatic. So yeah, but yeah, but remember that it is automatically closed. Yes, it's automatically closed. Know, but, but, but but it is triggered by the security person on hand to yes. automatically close it. He has to you know turn a key and push the close button to close it. Yes. So but we are given the very unique option to open the doors yes. within the train. Yes. So why do they consider it a security concern? Um. Probably because the the you know for potential um, if someone wanted to leave when the clo- the the doors are closing, yes. I would I would think that under the contract negotiations that if it were to close on a particular person, yes, it is the controller's fault. Right. Probably on the health and safety guidelines, that is correct. Okay. Yep. So more than likely, um, they will come to some sort of agreement where either 
nothing will get done yes. and, the, and the trains will continue being on strike. Um, security members being on every carriage, which I doubt, mm. because I would think if we were to do that, fares would increase. Seriously and, unpopular. And considering um, how, because of the Auckland Transport public network, yes, it is very reliant on the trains. Oh yes, and I love them myself. So, the the train network is sort of like the the uh, the vein and the artery. Yes. Of Auckland's traffic. Whereas the buses are the capillaries. Yes. Thing is, the trains are incredibly popular because they're the only people, only mode of transport that is guaranteed to be on time. Because they basically have their own tracks and they don't need to share with anything now, else. Now, so they're the most reliable. Now, wait, wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's. It, it's it's more reliable because it's more likely to be more on time. Yes. Yeah. Just because we, they have their own tracks, they don't need to share it with anything else. Yeah. You, oh well, well, they do share it with other trains. But they, but not much. Not, not many. Near, not yeah. many trains. So, like, like for instance, the trains are late, yes. but they're not as late as the buses. No, the buses are notorious because they have to fight Auckland traffic. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. To, to just, you know. Tr- tr- yeah, you, you know, for the people on, on the other side of the podcast, you, yes. you, you know, we, we try and be as transparent and elaborate as best as we can on a, on a given point. Yes. I'm, I'm not going to say be completely lawyer on that sort of schedule, but, you know, ma- make yeah, them more but, informed. But, you know, tra- put it this way, trains are popular for because of many reasons. Yeah. But he knew, he knew anyway, like the news. <laughs> anyway, so um, the trains being on strike will only put more pressure on the bus systems, which are already um, pretty overloaded as they are, which is actually very unfortunate. Oh, and, and even on, mm. you know, more cars being on the road? Yes, more cars will be on the road. The, and Auckland, the Auckland road system is just chocker right at this moment. Yeah. Due to, um, you know, increased immigration, as not as many roads being built. Yeah, yeah, and that's probably the the main fault yeah. of um, you know council and government. But that's the thing. Do you do we really need more roads being built right at this moment? Because I would rather not see as many cars. Uh, we don't need car- We shouldn't need cars. We should probably only rely on public transport. I mean, I do understand that some people actually do need cars for various things. But do we need as many cars as we already do at this moment? No. Can yeah. we, I mean, uh, okay, I'm sorry for being anal, <laughs> and it's, it's like, yeah, I understand that some of you guys do need cars, but do we need as many cars as Rudy do on the road? Now, now it, it, you know, as a person, I can't believe that I'm the calm one in this situation. I, I, I can't believe this. You're what? I'm the calm one, and I'm the wise one in all this. You always are the calm <laughs> and wise one, Mike. You're um, the older one, and besides, I'm the more passionate one. I mean, we're both as clever as each other, yeah. but you have the experience and the indifference to stay calm. Yeah. So that's why you're the calm <laughs> and wise one. I thought you would know by now. And besides, you're the one with the beard. Oh, well, yeah. You're the one that's able to stroke his chin with a luxuriant facial growth. Yes. Yeah, so, I can't. So, so you, you know, before I say my point, um, pretty much I am Socrates, but um, I use deodorant. Mm. So, so it's, yes. <laughs> it's, if you're Socrates, I'm Aristotle, yeah. the student. Um, so, you, you know, you have to take a lot of things into consideration. Yes. One is the time between where you leave your house to get to your workplace dependent on how quickly you get there by public transport yes versus private, private transport yeah or carpooling yeah well yeah i mean that's could be another i mean if you guys still want to use private transport but still want to do your bit to reduce the amount of cars on the road why don't you talk to your colleagues see where any of them live maybe you guys can carpool from time to time yeah dead right um it, because like save on fuel, have more camaraderie. Um, the the smaller that that gap becomes between the public, public and, and private, 
the more likely you are to use to use pub. Are you repeating everything I say? <laughs> the more likely you are to use public transport. Well, the thing is, we hang out so much, I'm starting to get your speech patterns. Yeah. And you're starting to get my speech patterns, so from time to time we're now saying the exact same thing at the exact same time by mistake. Yeah. Such as the IHOP incident. Oh, that was funny. <laughs> no, but, but, yeah. but, but, we'll but talk about the IHOP incident later, but... Yeah. You're saying that the reason why public transport is so unpopular is because they are slow. Yeah, well, in certain instances, that the gap for certain individuals is too high. Yes. So that's why that they use their car. Um, do I reckon that many transport hubs, aka train stations, mm. should have a larger allocations of parking? Of course. Yes. Because more than likely, if you were to uh, take your car to a train station, then hop on the train. Yeah. It'll be, you, you know, th that time would decrease a lot. So, okay. So there should be more underground car parks near train stations. Or, or, or parking in general. Or just parking in general. And how about bike rentals? So if you're going, so if you're going to leave your car one place, you might want to bike in the other place. But yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah, exactly. So, so increase in car parking as well as increasing bike rentals, or increases in. Buses. Yes. Around trains. Or, or um, alternate routes. Alternative routes, okay. And do you think that there should be more bus stations right beside train stations? Like in the, say in the Medi-Cal um, Transport Centre. Now, um, Auckland Transport, to their credit, Yes. Um, they're getting closer to that. Yeah, I mean, they've got a limited budget, as well as poor planning for the previous years, so... Um, like, 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 take for instance, Manukau, yeah. case in point, Otahu. Okay. Um, there was a K gap between the bus station and the train station. Oh, nasty. Um, I've had to walk that route. Yeah. Um, it's safe for you, it's not for me. Yeah, I, I, I know, I know, but, but in saying that, you know, you know, what, what you're trying to do is exactly what um, Auckland Transport is trying to do yeah. to try and be the capillaries as we talked about previously. So more than likely what needs to happen is that there needs to be more parking, yeah. alternate bus routes for, for the ones that are not going the way that they are. For you know the granular things because the thing is with trains, I went to Motor, at the, Motor a few days ago. I think they need to have like a few kilometres gap in between the train stations, like at least 10 kilometres gap for the big trains, because that's how long it takes for them to break. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, like, do I think there should be more train stations? Of course I should be. Yeah. But the likelihood of it happen happening in Auckland's geographic and financial era would, no. would not happen. So you're trying to reduce that, that public-private window yeah. as close as you can so it'll be better off for you'll get more likely people would yeah. pick public over private. Private, private yeah. Especially if you make it cheaper too. <laughs> yeah, but... <laughs> to be fair, public transport is already pretty damn cheap if you're going into the city if you account for the parking costs. Yes. Um, it's horrendous expensive to park all day in the city. Yeah, uh, well, um, but we, we haven't even gone to parking yet. Yeah. Um, but we're just talking about, you, you know, the, the best way to move people in a, in a theoretical sense. Yeah. Um, would it be better if you were to do, like, if you grabbed multiple routes in a row? Yeah. If it was to be cheaper for, for the the second and the third transport link mm. that may possibly work um, the red link is a good example of that yeah um, so if you grab the train from anywhere to the city yes um, the inner the the red link yes. which is goes from Britomar to K Road and back and down to Silo Park yeah that is free it used to be free no it's still free for at hop users yes oh I see Tag on, tag off. Tag on, tag off. <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. Um, and, yeah, I, do I think that's a good idea? Yes. Should I think that it should be for all going from train to buses? Um, discounted, yes. It, it, it'll be more than likely that discounted yeah. would be the way to go. I think they already do that. 
in that if you actually use your hop card to tag onto a bus, tag off to a bus, then tag on to a train within 15 minutes, it just adds on to your previous bus fare. Yeah, 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 so but, instead yeah. of actually paying for two trips, you pay for one big trip, which yeah. is actually cheaper. Yeah, yeah, but, but what I'm saying is, yeah. is that make it even cheaper yeah. for the for the bus bus route. Yeah. Rather than, you know, having it at the same Auckland transport price yeah. across those two routes. Make it cheaper for the bus route. Because because it'd be more likely that a person who was catching the train yes. needs to get on another bus to get to wherever they need to go. So make the buses cheaper so that you get more trains will be used. No, no, but, but I was mean like if you are using a train and going to a bus. Yeah. Not not have the bus routes cheaper overall, yeah. but if you're having a train and a bus, okay. make it slightly cheaper. Yeah, that's what they're doing with the new bus, new hop fare system. Yeah. So, yeah, whenever that happens. Yeah. No, that's already happening. No, no, but yeah, but like... You th- you don't think it's cheap enough? Well, yeah, I, well, I don't think it's... Because what, what you're saying makes sense, but yeah. remember, you're paying cheaper between having a cash fare versus an AT, AT hop, hop fare. That's regardless of um, how many routes you, that you do. Um, if it's one, three, whatever. But I'm saying that it should be cheaper again if you're having two or three routes. Two or three routes. Yeah. Two or three... You have to change transport two or three times. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Okay. How about light rail? Light rail is tricky. Yes. Um, because um, you, you have to dedicate um, a lane. Yeah. For the for the light rail, and considering how congested Auckland is already. Yeah. They should have just gone the the Manukau and just extended it to the airport. It would have been a lot cheaper than what it is normally. Okay, so light rail is almost impossible because there's so much traffic. <laughs> yeah, because like especially with the route that they're going through, yeah. they're going through Dominion Road, which is one of the busiest roads. Ro- yeah, in central Auckland. Oh, okay. So that is so. So so w- yeah. yeah, what the what the you know the light rail option? Yeah, is that they are shortening down the sidewalks yes. and the parking lane the parking bits on Dominion Road yeah say no parking here because we put it in light rail right um do I think this is extremely expensive of course it is um do those, I th- but those th- types of things you shouldn't ask whether they're initially expensive you should ask whether they pay for themselves within reasonable amounts of time because we're never talking about public transport. Of course, you're going to spend millions on infrastructure. It's just the nature of the thing. Yeah, but you know, like it'll be a lot cheaper and more feasible yeah. if you just extended the Manukau line to the to the airport. That's you're talking about trains, right? Yeah. Okay. Because there's already a train going to Manukau. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And there's already tracks from Manukau to the airport. Right. Use just, it. Just use it. Okay. Um, personally, I like quite like trams myself. And that's kind of, it'll be, it's a cool concept, having a train on the road. Yeah. But I also quite understand that uh, Auckland roads are narrow and we haven't exactly thought about this yes. properly. Yes, correct. But, yeah, with that being said, we're talking specifically about light rail here. We're not talking about trams. Even though I get so confused between the two and even though I already made that mistake already, yeah. light rails are not trams. Correct. Not anymore. Because the difference is, they're less no- light rail is less noisy, they're much more modern, they're sleek, they're cleaner, and they don't make those stupid clackety 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 noise. And, and speaking of things of going clackety clackety clack, um, what is the pretentious food corner for today? Okay, so shall we try this one? Um, this is apparently a bamboo cream. Do you mind opening this, Mike? Um, I, was, I was just doing my nails. Thank you. I use my teeth. Teeth on plastic packaging and you're not sick. Yeah. You're my long lost brother, so I don't care. Can okay, please um, split this in half? Well I, need the, well, I need the knife. 
no, no, this is this is a cream. You can just split it in half. No worries. Oh, oi! You touch my fingers. Oh man. As of this moment, Sophie is redoing her nails. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think. Why is she doing her nails? Why does she do her nails now? Because we're doing nothing, Mike, with my hands. This is therefore making this a perfect time to do my nails. Thank you. And what colour? So, so this, you say it's bamboo cream. Bamboo cream, yes. Why is it bamboo cream? Because it's made with bamboo. Can you get bamboo milk? Not too sure. But you can get bamboo shoots to eat. Yeah, I know, but I was thinking, like, you, you, why would you have bamboo cream if you can't have bamboo milk? It's delicious, though. I'm not too sure. I guess you can pulverise some young bamboo shoots to get bamboo milk. Is, is, it, is, it, is it using that bamboo whisk? Yeah. <laughs> using bamboo utensils made in the bamboo house. Yeah. This isn't too bad. Mm, this is actually quite nice. Now, where did you get this from? There is an Asian bakery near here. An Asian bakery? Mm-hmm. Is it the one down Lawn Street? Yeah. Yeah, I've been to that one before. Mm-hmm. Good food. Good food. That's very, um... It's very comforting, I have to say that. Mm. Full of sugars and fat. Now, I have to give, you know, Asian bakeries credit. Mm -hmm. They know the fine line between savoury and sweet. Oh yeah. So you know, like the Bellamy, for example, that was overly sweet. Mm. And with this, and like um, with red bean cakes, for example, mm -hmm. they keep their softness, and the sweetness is there, but it's not as strong. No. They say that Oreos in Asia are smaller and so less sweet than American Oreos. Yeah. I guess they're not not, not to overdo it. Hmm. Great. Whereas in Americans, they can't taste things. They can't so. taste things. Their yeah, senses are insensitive as hell, which is why. They always overspice things, they always oversweeten things, they always make things too big. Yeah. Big and, big and brash. They, go, they, they are desensitized to life. Mm-hmm. Been saying that. First day back at uni, huh? Tomorrow, for me. For, for you, tomorrow. For you, have you? Are you back? Um, no, no, no. I start tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I start tomorrow. But I have to be here today for myriad of reasons, such as me. Yeah, such as Sophie. How about how about um, anything else? Um, well, we've got quiz night later on tonight. And how's your doctors? They oh. gave you the final all clear. Oh no, that was ages ago. Yeah. Um, but uh, my counselling today. Mm -hmm. the, the, this morning. Ah, oh, yeah. How was it? Yeah, it was right. Yeah. It's anyway, right. guess who's back? Back in again. <laughs> no, no, mm -hmm. no. Just no. So, no. Sophie, no. <laughs> um, is that? Is it time? Twenty-three minutes. Yeah. Um, before we go. No, actually, should we sh sh we save it for the next podcast? Mm. Okay. This is. Well, this has been the AZ Undecided podcast with your hosts, Mike and Sophie. We're broke. We're broke? Yeah, we're broke. Okay. I'm you, sorry. You, you, you know why? You can't contact us <laughs> anymore. <laughs> I mean, can, you can't contact us anymore. We, we can't afford anything now. Because yeah. the thing is, I've just bought all my textbooks. How about you, Mike? Um, I have none right now. We're just sorry. Yeah. Um, we, we, when we do get data, you can contact us on as yet undecided podcast at gmail.com or you can contact me at the manus t-h-e-m-a-r-n-u-s sophie is at sophie 9709 and you know you may be able to find us on as at ayu podcast at ayu podcast but um as i said we're broke no data sorry